with Strawman, do you mainly use BLC or BLX? It depends on case though. First mandibular molar, there's a you know a bone in between the roots. And sometimes it can be pretty wide and thick. In that case, I could use BLX engage a little more to work and it go in. Sometimes it's pretty thin that I know that aggressive thread would completely destroy it. And I have nothing but maybe a couple of millimeters at the apex to engage, which oftentimes is not enough because the thread is not really there. Um, then I would use BLC to, to torque it. If I do indirect sinus lift, just a few millimeters, um, and I pack pretty good, and I have pretty soft bone, so I have under it. Um, then depending on the case, I can use BLC or, or BLX, because if you use BLC, since the, the thread is not as aggressive, you can kind of like under drain, kind of push the bone away and then get a little more torque. If I am maybe bumping just a couple millimeters and then I have a regular bone in the sinus, and then, um, I want to maximize the torque, I could under drain and then get BLX and get a pretty predictably 55 plus torque every single time. If I only have like a one or two millimeter of fibular bone, I'm lifting sinus either directly or for, or indirectly um, by like 10 millimeters or so. And then I have to use BLC because if you look at the neck, if you use BLX by the time where the threads goes in, it's not going to fit because the threads are larger than the, than the neck. But BLC is pretty much tapered. So you could engage and then predictably let the, the implant stay because all you need is anything greater than zero torque. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, I mean, sometimes you, know, you can get zero torque and you can be fine, you can bury it, you'll be fine. But you know, that's you know, you want at least that primary stability to to let it work. Um, usually, you know, you and I can get 55 plus pretty routinely.